Hello everybody! I've returned! It's me, Ghost Critic! I'm back off my... Um, it's almost been a month hiatus now. Um, for those of you who have just um, joined or just recently been watching my videos, uh, you will have heard in my last one that I had um, a lot of personal issues going on and I just couldn't give my full attention, my full passion um, to this channel and I didn't want to let you guys and girls out there down. So I just thought, right, I'll just stop, get everything else sorted um, and make sure you know I'm back to to a settled point. And while I don't want to go into it a, a great deal, um, kind of my real life has taken a knocking. Me personally, my confidence in, in what I do has taken quite the beating, and unfairly I feel. But I can't do anything about what has been done, what has been said. Um, I'm feeling better now, um, not 100% and I don't know if I ever will um, after this, but I've got to start doing things again that I enjoy, that I get uh, a, a sense of fulfilment about and obviously my first choice is going to be this comic book channel which I have loved doing for the last five years. Um, and I've missed you all so, so much. Um, I've kind of dipped in and out occasionally in the last month um, with the rest of your videos, but not half, not even half as much as I should do. So today is kind of like a brand new start. I'm going to start watching all your videos again, um, hopefully finding some new subscribers to... to um, to subscribe to and enjoy their videos and today I'm coming at you with a comic book haul. Last week I was on holiday, took a few days out in London where much drinking, much eating, much carousing was done and of course a little bit of comic book hunting was done um, and as I said I've got a comic book haul for you hopefully there will be um, a range of stuff that's interested to to everyone who watches this it's um, um, coming up to the you know modern day comics going right back to um, the silver age so there's a vast variety of stuff there all from different publishing houses as well and I hope you really enjoy that um, this coming week um, I'm going to kind of start a little bit slow, I'll put up my new comic book Wednesday video and on Friday I hopefully will have done uh, a comic book review monthly video. Now for those of you again who have been watching my channel for a long time, you will know that I switched this year to doing monthly comic book reviews where I pick my five favourite comics of that previous month and I picked another five that I just wanted to say, hi, you should maybe give these a go. It, these are interesting. There was something to talk about with them, though they may not have been my favourites. Well, just for this month and this month only, um, I am going to do a review of every single comic book I purchased in August. Um, so uh, that'll be good to look forward to. So um, it was the Olympics last month. So just like those in athletes, I suggest you start limbering up, um, kind of warming up those um, those beepers because I'm expecting it to be uh, a very long video. So hopefully you'll be ready for that on Friday. So without further ado, let's have a look at what I managed to pick up while I was in London. They got picked up from two stores. There was no comic book mark because it was the middle of the week. So um, one was from the store Mega City One in Camden and in Notting Hill there's a comic book uh, a, comic, a comic and book exchange store uh, which sells a huge amount of uh, back issues so I plundered those as well. Hope you enjoy it! Okay, so let's kick off with my London comic book haul. As I said in the intro, I'm sure there's going to be plenty in here that's going to interest a wide variety of people within our comic book community. Um, going from, you know, the most up-to-date kind of stuff to going back to kind of Bronze Age stuff on there. Uh, obviously familiar characters and all that like and spanning lots of different um, uh, publishing companies companies. 
So I'm going to kick off with some of the odd ones that, um, you know, I'm just kind of filling in gaps, stuff that I've been interested in. And we start off with uh, Ellis Shavely and... Uh, sorry, Shelby and Belair's Injection. This is issue number four. I'm kind of getting this as and when I find it. Uh, so I'm kind of reading it very, well, very much out of order. And it's it's a weird little comic, but I love it. There's this kind of, it's kind of stretching on the line of kind of Hellblazer, Constantine, different dimensions with supposed demons and all that kind of stuff in there uh, with uh, Shelby and Belair's art and colouring on this it just makes this book really pop for me uh, I'm surprised that I didn't pick this up on a kind of regular monthly basis but I'm happy to find these really cheap now um, on to uh, an America's Best Comics it's Alan Moore's Tomorrow Stories uh, with um, the first American and US Angel uh, this was a really kind of fun read about um, the the um, the kind of superheroes uh, cashing in on um, on their popularity and uh, kind of advertising things that you know really that not really not that they shouldn't but uh, it's kind of seen as a bit of kind of shady dealing but it's done in that kind of very fun uh, almost light-hearted way but you can see Alan Moore having a little pop at um, lots of um, lots of people within the community the the um, the business of comics um, sticking with America's Best Comics, issue 31 of Tom Strong with Michael Moorcock and Jerry Ordway writing this. I'm so happy that I um, went searching out for Tom Strong. The stories are always so well written. It doesn't matter who's writing it, who's doing the artwork. It's always strong, solid storytelling. And it's got this kind of wide genre-based um, kind of appeal to it where you never know where the story is going to take you in the next episode here we have a kind of swashbuckling pirate story that you're, you're you're not expecting given kind of tom strong's background and the science and the sci-fi and the space but it works and it's really really good uh, finishing off some kind of little gaps in my Spawn series, trying to collect everything up to under issue 150, which is where I eventually stopped with Spawn. Um, who knows what's going on with it now? I know a couple of people have kind of jumped onto Spawn now. Um, uh, and hopefully they're enjoying it. I loved Spawn. I loved collecting Spawn when I was. Um, I know a lot of people found it kind of lost its way along the way, but there was always that great McFarlane and um, Capullo teaming on the book, uh, and it was just a big joy for me from early days of Image. Filling in a little gap with Lazarus. I've only got I think it's two more to find now to to complete my current run because now I'm picking it up um, monthly but a great series is Lazarus. Uh, found an extra little shade the changing man um, from the kind of late 80s early 90s this is issue 22 to some great Brendan McCarthy artwork in here completely psychedelic dreamlike craziness in here uh, and what was great at the initial start of Shade the Changing Man it was one of those suggested for mature readers comics from DC and eventually made its way onto the Vertigo line um, Superman Batman issue number 72 I think I've always said I'm not a big fan of Superman per se when he's on his own but for some reason when it gets teamed up with Batman the stories just work for me again I think obviously it is that kind of yin and yang of the kind of characters they are they're both very different in their approaches um, but they are kind of like almost kind of there's an almost bromance going on here and, it, and it's just really really good and entertaining to read um, issue 73 as well and uh, throwing in Lois Lane there Looking like she's been burnt at the stake um, I adore the spirit anyway it's a great character but when you've got Darwin Cook writing and drawing it with Jay Bone and Dave Stewart doing the inking and the colouring Wow, these are great stories um, and anything with Darwin Cook clearly is, is a winner for me. So I got issue four 
and issue number six. Again, very well. I mean, these two I've already read and they're great kind of self-contained stories. They have a start, they have a middle and they have the end and it makes sense. It doesn't feel rushed and they're just kind of like these perfect kind of small vignettes and I just think they're great. Um, a little one from DC this time written by David Hine. This was one of their DC's first wave series. This is issue number seven. I actually hate this cover because it's got a needle on it and I hate needles so I'm going to get rid of that very quickly. Um, on to some fillers for my Before Watchmen um, collection. This is the last issue of Ozymandias by Len Wein and Jay Lee. Um, buy this purely just for the Jay Lee artwork. It's really good. Um, well, Len Wein's okay at this. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of very poo-poo before Watchmen, but some of them are really good stories. And obviously, Minutemen, written, drawn, everything by Darwin Cook. Again, it's got to be had. Um, issue number two, dealing with the Minutemen um, from the 19th, 40s I want to say and um, using um, Hollis who wrote the um, Exposé book in the original Watchmen series um, coming off of that as well issue number three uh, with a silhouette on the cover there uh, just I, I really do enjoy this I think it is very much to do with Darwin Cook uh, but great series nonetheless now we move on to a big chunk of the kind of Secret Wars, Battle World, War Zone series from um, last year's uh, big events, kind of Secret Wars 2 in a way, or 3 even, uh, where we had, you know, for those of you who already know, Doom made this planet up of all kind of bits of different uh, Marvel universes, and we had all these endless tie-ins. And for some reason, I want to collect them all. <laughs> I, I, it's very strange to talk about this because it's, it was an event. You had your main eight, nine books, and then you had all these kind of satellite issues, um, tie-ins, but they weren't really tie-ins. They didn't kind of make this big, one huge, cohesive, cohesive universe. But it reminded me of when I did love Marvel, where it didn't always have to have a huge event that crossed through every title and made it difficult to remember uh, or even collect every issue. So you knew when a character popped up in one series uh, just for a, like a guest appearance and they talked about something you had no idea. Um, and, you know, as a kid, couldn't afford to buy all of them. So, you know, you just had to kind of go in blind sometimes. And that's what this did. But really, it shouldn't have. These are all very separate stories that you find in these in these series, these, these kind of tie-in satellite issues. Um, and they all should have connected, but they didn't really. So I'm kind of, yes, this reminds me of old kind of nostalgic Marvel, uh, but at the same time, it should have been big event, everything tying in, but I suppose a little bit too difficult for Marvel to pull off. Anyway, I've rambled on a bit too much about that but here we go house of m issue number one secret wars style um with dennis hopless mark ophelia and matt wilson um good little comic um messing around with the idea of the original house of m which is a lot what a lot of these do um hail hydra issue number three from remenda and uh, one book that I was very surprised to enjoy because I'm not the greatest kind of Western type fan, 1872 by um, Duggan Varelli and Lowridge. Um, but I really enjoyed these versions of Marvel characters, but set in um, a kind of Western, Wild West setting. Yeah, you've got Wilson Fisk in there. You've got Tony Stark. You've got Dr. Banner, not as the Hulk, but by the end of this potentially um there's so many there's black widow in there as well but with that kind of western feel and i really enjoyed that uh 1602 witch hunter angela um kind of vibing off the original 1602 series 
um, but with um, Angela who had just kind of recently I guess been brought back well not brought back but brought into the Marvel Universe after being born in Image Comics in Spawn uh, it was it was good art art was definitely exciting I don't think I've actually read the whole series of this I've kind of re been reading it out of order so uh, maybe it'll be more cohesive once I've collected it all uh, Secret Wars 2099 so we're kind of like future Marvel with very different looking characters um, than we're used to we've got issue number two this was Peter David issue number three and issue number four Moving on to a Battle World tie-in, this was a kind of vibing off the uh, original Siege uh, series event that they had, which I didn't, I don't think I actually read the original one, I was kind of all evented out at the time, so um, really had no comparison to make on this, but, but that's okay. Then we had Secret Wars Battle World, which was just kind of uh, a couple of short stories in each of them with kind of fights against characters you kind of understood or, or seen versions of them and who would win or who would draw or who would just become friends again because that's the kind of thing that happened in this but great uh francesco francovilla cover there with silver surfer and a version of um, i think it's i think that's actually the maestro rather than um the incredible hulk then we had the ultimate end so we had all the ultimate versions of um, our Marvel characters uh, facing off with the regular Marvel universe and as always you know when you get two groups of heroes together what do they do they fight so we've got a variant edition here this is the Bagley cover but also I, I accidentally picked up um, the original cover as well um, issue number one and then the final issue number five um, it's Brian Michael Bendis writing this so you can imagine it's very wordy very um, lots of faces in lots of boxes um, with mm, kind of different facial expressions we've got Bagley to um, blame for that but hey ho uh, Age of Apocalypse one of my favorite X related events um, this is again another version of it in our Secret Wars universe issue number one issue number two and issue number five and finally for the Secret Wars titles it's Modoc Assassin um, uh, generally just kind of jokey funny book with Modoc falling in love with um, Angela uh, and the hijinks that that entails um, just a, a kind of fun book Moving on to some Dark Horse and, of course, Conan, the Avenger. Really digging these Dark Horse Conan books. Been trying to collect as many as I can when I find them. Um, this is issue 10 of Conan the Avenger with Fred Van Lente uh, writing it. Um, I always find with Conan that the storytelling is incredibly strong. Um, I think that's because they are very... Um, honoring that they are honoring the actual source material much more than say maybe marvel did with their huge series but that's a series that i might be interested in collecting once i'm done with this um, but it's always the artwork that can be kind of touch and go with conan uh it can either be really good or it can be mm, could have been better there, there's no kind of happy medium there um, we've got issue 11 of conan the avenger and issue number 14 uh, we got Conan the Barbarian issue 16 covers are always really fun um, uh, and, and interesting then we've got a little mini series Conan in the Jewels of Gowala uh, P. Craig Russell, Levin Kinzieski and Galen Showman on art uh, also issue 3 I've got to find issue 1 now uh, but looking forward to reading that then we move on to some DC. We've got some issues of John Ostrander and Tom Mandrake's The Spectre from, I think it was the mid-90s, was it? Yeah, 95. So we've got issue 25, 29, The Spectre, or a strider dinosaur over a flaming city. Uh, city in flames, wow. What a cover that was. Issue 31. Issue 32 and issue 43. 
then an earlier series by um, uh, Doug Munch and um, I can't remember his first name but Badger um, this was going back to the 80s uh, kind of mid to late 80s there um, but great stuff now we move on to some Marvel um, Fantastic Four again filling in gaps bringing down that massive number of copies I've still got to get but this is the main series I'm looking at and I found these very cheaply um, they're not in that bad a shape for what I paid for so I'm quite happy with this issue 142 issue 191 issue 196 with the invincible man issue 201 Issue 208 with the Sphinx. They're moving big time ahead up to issue 559, um, the Miller Hitch Curry Run. Um, issue number 560. Uh, going back again between they kind of like stopped the main series originally uh, and restarted it I think it was with the Heroes Reborn um, we went to issue 58 but as you can see they were gearing up for 500 showing us that this is issue 487 um, but another great fun fantastic four run uh, Matt Fraction and the All Reds on FF that kind of kind of kooky out of um, not out of continuity because it's kind of run alongside the the Fantastic Four series that was going on then but this was very much about the kids of the FF with Ant-Man and She-Hulk and She-Thing running the team but very much about the kids so we've got issue 10 and issue number 14 and finally last issue it may be a 6p variant and i am a bit snobby about this i prefer them to be the american cent copies but i saw this for two pounds when you see um, daredevils for you know in in the double digits and that cheap i'll just buy them this was uh, kind of one-off that i found in one of the comic book stores i went into but will add to again one of the main series that i am collecting and that is my uh, comic book haul for uh, my London um, holiday. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something that you found interesting in there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.